This morning, I just want to speak to you a message entitled Alive and Awake. Alive and Awake. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read just two scriptures and then we are just going to bow before the presence of the Lord and pray that the ministry of the word will speak to us and encourage us this morning. All right, shall we read Revelation chapter 1? Just verse 18, verses 18 and 8 and verse 18. It says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Verse 18, he says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Shall we pray? Father, this morning we come to you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to take over our minds, our thoughts. Even as your word goes forth this morning, Father, I pray there will not be any distraction, but we will receive as from you, God. We pray that by your spirit, Lord, that you will speak some area of our lives, Lord. That we want to be completely awakened this morning, Father. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will work within each one of us as the word is preached, Father. Let your word come, Lord, in the powerful demonstration of your spirit. And truly, God, we pray that we will be awakened by the word. Lord, we will be awakened by the word and spirit, Lord. And let your word bless our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Now, <clears throat> The purpose of this message is for every believer to be spiritually alive and awakened as you consistently fix your eyes upon Jesus. You know our team is fixing our eyes upon Jesus. So the purpose of this message is for every believer who is sitting here to be spiritually alive and awakened as you consistently fix your eyes upon Jesus. You know, in a few weeks, we are going to be uh, celebrating Good Friday. We are going to be celebrating Easter or Resurrection Sunday. In the early days, Easter was celebrated as a pagan festival. The pagans celebrated Easter. Okay, it was a pagan festival. And the world symbol, the world symbol for Easter is Easter eggs. We all know that, right? In Sunday school, even in Sunday school, you get Easter eggs when you go. The children go for the Sunday school, you also get Easter eggs. So the world symbol for Easter is, is Easter eggs. But for the church, the symbol of Easter is the empty tomb and open grave. It's the empty tomb and open grave. Friends, it is our resurrection. The empty tomb and open grave reminds us it's a resurrection coming to life coming to life you know all over the world we see all kinds of religious religions and religious people religious leaders who have come they have said good things no religious leader will say bad things all right the prophet Muhammad came came into the world and he showed the way showed a way and then Gautama Buddha came and he was waiting for a, for, a, for a revelation and he came to show another way but what I want to tell you this morning is friends Jesus Christ is the only one who came to this world and he said I am the way come on give him the way come on. he said I am the way he didn't say, I show you the way. He didn't show, say that I will show you one of the ways. But Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. No one comes to the Father but through me. So what I want you to recognize, friends, the God that you, whom we are believing is the God of resurrection. A God who is alive. The God who is alive. He is the God whom we believe. No one else can claim, I got a God who is alive. You and I have a God who is alive within us. And you can walk with Him and talk with Him 
and begin to receive from him and God begins to do something special in our life because he's alive because he's alive all right so Jesus Christ came he lived on this world and he is alive within us all right friends the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself to be crucified to death he gave himself to be crucified to death and on the third day he arose from the dead and third day he arose from the dead and, and the grave couldn't hold him the grave couldn't hold him he arose from the dead the grave couldn't hold him he conquered the grave and then he says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18 he says I am alive forevermore I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of Hades and death. This is the God of resurrection, who is the Alpha and the Omega, who is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And friends, we are God's people. You and I sitting here, we are worshiping the Lord. We are God's people, saved and redeemed by the blood. Saved and redeemed by the blood, who belong to this God of resurrection. We belong to this God of resurrection, all right? If we belong to Him, and God's expectation for his children. I want to tell you this this morning, friends. God's expectation for his children is to be constantly alive spiritually and manifest his, the, the spiritual awakening. Manifest the spiritual awakening. If you call yourself a Christian and you go to live in the world and, and mixing with your friends, can the people outside see you as somebody different? Or would they say, oh, everybody's the same, like, all religions are the same. But I want to tell you, the people of God, God's expectation is for the people to be spiritually alive every day and manifest in your life a spiritual awakening. Now this morning my message is spiritual awakening. I pray that the, as the, as the, as the word of God spoke this morning, the spirit of God will generate something deep in the depths of your heart. You will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Something is going to take place this morning. Now, first of all, I want to tell you about alarm. Alarm for awakening. Talking about awakening, alarm for awakening. You know, alarms are frequently used by all of us. All right? To, for, to, we need to get started on something. We need alarm. All right? We need to get alarm. Then we need to be warned of something dangerous. We need alarm. All right? The alarm clock wakes you up in the morning. Every morning, the alarm clock wakes you up in the morning. So when you need to get started with your daily routines in the morning, when thieves, when thieves are breaking into your house, the house alarm is triggered. The house alarm is triggered and warns you of something dangerous. Something dangerous. And friends, I want to tell you this morning, God has an alarm for believers who are sitting here this morning. God has an alarm for believers and it is his word it is his word now it is interesting to note that many times the scripture especially in the new testament men of god under inspiration of the holy spirit tell the believers tell the believers within the early church to wake up it's interesting to note that in men of, under the inspiration of the holy spirit in new testament especially Tell the believers within the early church, wake up, wake up, wake up. And in one occasion in Romans chapter 13, 11 and 12, Romans chapter 13, 11 and 12, it says, And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Now it's high time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. Verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And then in the New Living Version, Paul says, in the same the words, Paul says, another reason for right living is that you know how late it is. Know how late it is, time is running out. Time is running out. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. And also, the Apostle Paul sends another letter to the Ephesian church. 
in Ephesians, another letter with Ephesian church, and it says in Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 17, Ephesians 5, 15 to 17, it says, Therefore, be careful of how you walk. Therefore, be careful of how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Because the days are evil, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Friends, this morning we need to recognize the days are evil. The days are evil, the, the news of our times reveal there's a continual moral <clears throat> and spiritual decline. Everywhere, all over the world, there's moral and spiritual decline. Sin has become so common. Sin has become so common to the world, and the people of the world pursue darkness. People of the world pursue darkness. In the US, the people want the, 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 the government to, <coughs> to uh, uh, legalize abortion. You know, you see in the CNN news, you see the, the protest going on, they want the, the, the abortion to be legalized. Some states are okay, so they travel far to many, many hours to another state to get the abortion done. So the, the people of the world are pursuing darkness and they don't even realize that abortion when you're killing somebody, it's a murder and sin. They don't even realize. Or they're fighting for it. Legalize abortion. Legalize abortion. They don't even realize. All right? Now, <clears throat> now, also you see, God created man and woman to be husband and wife. Man and woman to be husband and wife. But the world is fighting for gay marriages. The world is fighting for same-sex marriages. You see the world fighting for it. God's plan is Adam and Eve and not Joel and Jerry. If you see the word of God, God's plan is Adam and Eve. It's never John and Jerry or Jan and Jeffrey. It's never God's plan, all right? The evil of Satan has blinded the people so that they are not sensitive to God and his principles. That's what has happened. The world, the evil of Satan, has actually blinded the world so that they are not sensitive to God and his principles. All right? Now, people of God, it's time for a spiritual awakening of the church. It's time that every church in Malaysia, every church all over the world, have a spiritual awakening in our midst. You know, we can't plan program for spiritual awakening. But we can prepare for it. We can plan a program for spiritual awakening, but we can prepare for it. Spiritual awakening does not come by a church, church having a right pastor. Or we have a right pastor, there will be awakening. Spiritual awakening doesn't come by just because we have a right leadership. Spiritual awakening doesn't take place like that. And also, spiritual awakening or revival. This morning, I'm, I'm, for those who are demo speaking, I want to let you know, I'm talking about awakening. It's Yilipudu. From your heart. Yilipudu from your heart. Alright? Okay, so spiritual awakening or revival does not come with the church having many activities. We have a barbecue party. We have fellowship. So the more fellowship goes, we think we can build a church. It doesn't take place. Spiritual awakening doesn't come by just fellowship. Fellowship is good. Fellowship is good. But spiritual awakening doesn't come by just fellowship and parties. Spiritual awakening will only come by the hand of God. Everybody say hand of God. Upon a submissive and a broken people who seek nothing more than to please Him and serve His kingdom. Spiritual awakening will come upon a submissive and broken people who will seek nothing more than to please him and to serve his kingdom. Last Sunday we, we received a message about brokenness. The people of God need to come in submission and broken brokenness and we need to have to want, want our heart to please God and please him and serve his kingdom alone. And we come with a submission of, of heart with a prayerful spirit. People 
people in every place you see where there is an awakening, where there is a revival, the people pray. The people pray. So if you want a spiritual awakening in Harvest Revival Center, the people pray. When the people pray and come with nothing more than to please Him and to serve His kingdom, awakening takes place. Yilipudal takes place. Revival takes place in the heart of the people individually and corporately. Now, Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm not going to read the whole portion because I just want to show you what it says in Ezekiel chapter 37. You can go back home and read in your own uh, devotion. Ezekiel chapter 37 it speaks of the condition of Israel which requires a miracle to bring the nation back to life. It requires a miracle to bring the nation back to life. And prophet Ezekiel receives the vision of the Lord. He receives a vision of the valley of dry bones. In that vision he received, he saw all dry bones all over. And the Lord spoke to him and said, prophesy to the dry bones. He said, prophesy to the dry bones. And he began to prophesy. He said, thus say the Lord, I shall put breath into you and you shall become alive. He began to prophesy and said, ah, thus says the Lord. He said, the Lord will bring breath into you and make you alive. It is the power of the spoken word. When Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel began to speak, it was the power of the spoken word to them. And the power of the spoken word is the word of the God of resurrection. Because he's alive. When you speak that word, because he's alive, when you speak his word, he becomes alive. Same thing can happen to each one of us. When you speak out the word of God, the God of resurrection will do something in the lives of the people to whom you speak. Speak the word, because it's the word. The spoken word is the power of resurrection. Spoken word is the power of resurrection. Church, we are living in the days where people around us are not interested in the things of God. I'm sure you all recognize that. We are living in the days where people are not, recognize, not concerned about uh, uh, things of God. The secular has become more important than the spiritual. The secular has become more important than the spiritual. People are more concerned about living happily on now in this earth. They are more concerned about living happily now on this earth, but they are not, no more concerned about life after death and eternity. Do you know church, we are just passing through. Earth is a temporary place for each one of us. It's a temporary place, they are just passing through. Our ultimate home is in heaven. Ultimate home is heaven. So people have become so concerned about now. For how I can I can enjoy my life on this earth, and but they're not no more concerned for life after death and eternity. You know, friends, no one knows when and how long we will live on this earth. I'm sure you can just try to recall and see in the last one year, how many of your friends, how many of your relatives just went home. You never you never realized. You never ever thought that they will leave so soon. So none of us know how long we are going to live on this earth and people are not able to discern the times and seasons we are living in. The times and seasons we are living in. It's, our, it's time that it's, we need to awake the people of God, the children of God, to see and discern the times of the times that we are living in. Now in view of the present state of the world we live in, it's the responsibility of the church. In view of the present state of the, the earth that we are living in, it's the responsibility of the church to rise up to be spiritually alive and awakened so that you can warn and you can reach out to people who are lost. So you can warn them. Jesus is coming back soon. Time is running out, friends. Time is running out. There are so many of our, our own immediate relatives, our own friends who do not know the Lord. We need to warn them. It's our responsibility as a church to become spiritually alive and awaken to warn them. But I want to tell you what all of my statement says. Only when you and I are spiritually awakened and alive, we will realize that as believers, we are called 
to a rescue mission. Everybody say rescue mission. Only when you're awakened, you realize that you are called. You have a calling. Always say, well, I come to church and go. I just come and worship the Lord and go. But do you know, you are called. If you are a born again believer, you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal savior, you are called to this mission called rescue mission. It's a rescue mission. And I tell you, you and I, only when we are spiritually alive and awakened, we will realize this call on our life of being a rescue mission believer. It's a rescue mission. You know, the, the believers, are the friends and the relatives that you know, you're talking with them, you're, 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 they're playing games with them, you're doing so many things with them. Have we ever thought of rescuing them? If they do not know the Lord Jesus, they are going to go to hell. You and I are the church. We are the ones who are called to rescue them from hell and put them in heaven and get them ready for heaven. You and I have got the responsibility. So we need to be spiritually alive and awake. If you ask yourself this question this morning, am I really spiritually awake, alive and awake? The next question you need to ask is that, how many people have I really rescued from hell? Some of the, our, our unbeliever friends who are Hindus or Muslims, they are good people. Don't you feel so sad that these good people can go to hell? That's why the church has got to arrive and know in your heart that we have the calling of rescue mission. You know, the prophet Ezekiel, he prophesied to the dry bones, speaking the word of God of resurrection, and the dry bones became alive. The spoken word brought death to life. The spoken word brought death to life. Now, this morning you're sitting here, you may have situations in your life where you feel that it is dead. You may have situations in your life where you feel that, that your situation is dead. Looks like there is no hope. Looks like there is no hope. You have become disappointed. You may be disappointed with, with your friends. You could be disappointed with the church. You could be disappointed with the people around. And you could be disappointed and discouraged. And you feel there is no hope. You may be facing a situation that has come to a deadlock. You feel there is no more hope. Nothing can be done. And you don't get a breakthrough anymore in that area of your life. But I want you to know there is hope in the God of resurrection that I'm talking about this morning. The God of resurrection who is alive forevermore. Come on, give me praise because he's alive. If you believe, he's alive. Come on, give him another praise. If you believe really from your heart, then he's alive. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. Every time we only remind ourselves during Easter or he's alive. What about other times? The daily walk with God, do we remind ourselves He's alive? He's a God of resurrection that we are believing in day by day. You know, you may be in that kind of a deadlock situation. You may think there is no hope. The same living God who brought life to dead bones was the same living God who made alive Sarah's womb. Remember, the Bible says Sarah was beyond reproductive age, beyond childbearing age. But this same God of resurrection made Sarah's dead womb alive. And this is the same living God who turned the water into wine. It's the same living God who can change your life this morning, who can change your situations. He can change your impossible situations to a possible situation. How many of you desire in your heart? Come on, let me see your hand. You desire to see the impossible things happening in your life. It's the impossible things. Things are impossible with man. It's impossible with, with God. He will turn around dead situations and bring you hope. Some of you are saying in your heart, Oh, my situation, too long already. My situation is too long already. I don't think I can do anything about it. I don't think I can do anything about it. You may say, I've gone to many specialists, but nothing happened. But I want you to know, the God of resurrection is above all specialists put together. The God of resurrection, you are The God of resurrection, 
He's above all, beyond the best fish specialist in the world. Amen. It is the Jesus who is my healer. Jesus who is the healer. It is beyond this specialist. So he, the God of resurrection, can bring you hope today. And if you feel that your situation is too long and, and people have prayed, nothing happened, but I want to tell you, this morning, begin to have been awakened in your heart to know my Lord is alive. Amen. Just be awakened. My God is alive. Very often, we use our natural mind and don't fully trust in the living God and don't give God an opportunity to do a miracle. Many times we use our mind, our intellect, and don't fully trust the living God and don't give an opportunity for God to do a miracle. Now I want you to just, put, I want to bring, bring to you a, a portion of the word that actually brings out this, right? And also I'm not going to read the whole chapter in Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 talks about the ruler of the synagogue, the temple. The ruler of the synagogue came pleading to Jesus to heal his daughter who was at the point of death. I'm sure that learned man who was a ruler who is well educated with the traditions of the Jews, the principles of Judaism, he is well versed with the principles of Judaism, could have used his natural mind and intellect and sat with his family, sat with his family at the point of death with his daughter. They knew that the, 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 the daughter is at the point of death. Doctors have told them, declared, there is no hope for your daughter. She's going to die. So this man who was a ruler of the synagogue, you know, this man ruler, he could have just thought of his natural mind and an intellect and said, okay, I will just sit with my family and be mourn and wait for her to die. All right, he could have done that. But if you see the portion of the word of God, go back and read Matthew chapter 5 for your next devotion. Tomorrow's devotion, read Mark chapter 5. It says here, but this ruler came with humility and brokenness. He came with you and believing that Jesus can heal his daughter. Even though everybody was mourning, they were all sitting and waiting for her to die. This man, the ruler, you know, the, when the rulers said, yeah, you got some, some punkah in there, in their, you know, in their rulers, in their, in their temple, you know. So this ruler cannot simply go and talk to anybody and, and humble himself and do that. But this ruler, who's a, supposed to be a proud man, he came he, with humility, humbled himself in brokenness. He came to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal his daughter. Now, what happened if you look into the whole portion of the world? You see, that girl was completely healed because he came with brokenness and humility. When we come with brokenness and humility, things will change. The God of resurrection who is alive today, he will change your situation. Even at the point of death. Even at the point of death. You know, sometimes we all go through difficult kinds of circumstances in our, in our physical body. You know, many times, even myself, even as a medical man, when a, a physical problem comes, you know, 60% or 70% of the time, I'm thinking about the medical condition. I'm thinking, oh, if this happens, the next thing is, uh, next thing you become paralyzed, and next thing you die. You begin to think about the natural thinking and physical lifestyle. We begin to think. But today, when we begin to be awakened by the Spirit of God, we begin to realize that our God, the God of resurrection, is alive forevermore, and we can trust Him because he is alive. We can trust him because he is alive. He will change your situation. He will heal your terminal illness because that which is impossible with man is possible with God. That which is impossible with man is possible with God. Somebody say amen to that. Yes, that which is impossible with man. When doctors have given up hope, when your terminal illness, they say, sorry brother, Sorry, Mr. So and so, there's nothing can be done medically. Go back and pray. Sometimes unbelievers will tell you, go home and pray. You know, but I want to tell you here, we are living 
living the lifestyle, we're living in this world, knowing and recognizing that our God is the God of resurrection and things that are impossible with man is possible with God. The daughter of the ruler was, was at the point of death, but Jesus healed her. Our God is alive, is able to do exceedingly more than what our mind can think or even imagine. Something we can think, we can imagine. Our God, our resurrection can do much more than that, even what we think and what we imagine. Right? Now, the next part is, you and I, we believe in the God of resurrection. You and I have been made alive. I want to show you from the scripture. You and I who believe in the God of the resurrection who is alive forevermore. You and I have been made alive. I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, he said, And you he made alive. In the, new, in the King James Version, it says, And you he quickened. The word quickened was used. And you he made alive who were dead, or you who were quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. And then verse 4 and 5 says, But God who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he has loved us, even when we are dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. I want to say that again. Made us alive together with Christ. So friends, if you believe in a God who is alive forevermore, He made us alive. He made us alive together with Christ. So, as the Spirit of God speaking to you this morning, friends, allow the Spirit of God to awaken your heart. Awaken your heart to know that you are alive. You are born again. You are alive. Alright? He has made you alive. Jesus Christ with the resurrection of life quickened us. The word quickened us. He quickened us and makes us spiritually alive. Make us spiritually alive. The miracle of salvation, friend, that we experience is the resurrection of our lives from darkness and death. Even the, when you accept Jesus Christ, the miracle of your salvation is actually what happens is God has made you alive and brought you out from darkness and death. That's why you experience the born again experience today. Because the God of resurrection has made you alive and made you experience being a born again child of God. You made alive. You are resurrected. Okay? Alright. You are made alive. And so he has awakened us from spiritual death to be born again and spiritually alive. Now, many years ago, we, when we were working in the government service in the in a, in a labor war, this word quickening, you have been quickened, made alive, right? This word, word quicken was quicken was quickening was used very often in the labor war. What happens is when the, when a woman was pregnant, when it's 18 to 20 weeks pregnancy, all of a sudden the woman will start begin to, to feel that the baby is moving. The baby is kicking. The baby is moving. And that condition, the gynecologist will call it quickening. Quickening, all right? To 18 to 20 weeks, they begin to have a quickening. And what has happened is that baby has become alive. That big baby has become alive, okay? That baby has become alive, quickened, and, and, and now that that baby, you can hear the baby uh, uh, movement. You can, the mother will say, oh, today she, he is kicking much. Or today she is kicking much. You know, you, see, the mother begins to feel this quickening, quickening that in, in her moment. Now, I want to tell you, friends, the quickening power is the power of resurrection. The quickening power is the, is the power of resurrection. The quickening power. That quickening power can quicken your life today. If you come here with a, with a heart that is discouraged, heart that is disappointed, you are depressed this morning, you came here with such a depression, but I want to tell you that God of resurrection this morning is going to quicken you and make you alive. And that awakening is going to cause you to change your life. That awakening is going to be something different and you're going to be alive spiritually and awakened spiritually. The quickening power. Now friends, I'm just going to tell you four things before we close this morning. When you are quickened by the power of resurrection, you will be awakened 
in four areas. You will be awakened in four areas in your Christian walk. Right? We all are walking in the a Christian. The first area that you will be quickened is you are awakened to righteousness. Awakened to righteousness. Now, I want to turn your attention to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 34. Let me read to you. 1 Corinthians 15 says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Imagine Paul is talking to the Corinthians and he says, Awake to righteousness, do not sin. Some do not have the knowledge of God. And he says, I speak this to your shame. Paul is telling the Corinthians, okay? All right. Now, when the quickening power of the living God touches you, you will become so sensitive and you will come to a realization of anything that is unrighteous and contrary to God. I'm talking about a quickening power right now. All right? When the quickening power touches you of the God of resurrection, you suddenly become aware and sensitive and come to the place of realization, realizing anything that you're doing that is against God's will, against God, which is contrary to God. All right? And I, I remember a testimony many, many years ago. There was a Christian brother who was, uh, who was driving very, uh, uh, very dangerously and, and uh, suddenly the traffic light was red, but he went zoom, he, went, he, he didn't stop. And then he was caught by the police. The police caught him and uh, asked him for his IC. Now, as he was taking out his IC, he had a thought, maybe I should give him some ringgit so he won't charge me 150 ringgit in, in the court. All right, so what he did was, he took the, uh, the IC, put 50 ringgit and wrapped the IC and gave it to the, to the policeman. And the policeman took it, saw the 50 ringgit, took it and put it inside and said, okay, Jalan. Told him to Jalan. Okay, and then this brother was so excited. Oh, God saved me. Oh, uh, praise God. He came to the cell group. He came to the cell group and he testified, I want to praise God. I want to praise God because God saved me from 150 ringgit. But the policeman let me go with just 50 ringgit. He's praising God. You know why, friends? He's a Christian. I'm talking about a Christian. I'm not talking about unbeliever. I'm talking about Christian. That Christian has not come to a place of awakening. He has not received that quickening power within him to be so sensitive and come to a realization anything that is wrong and contrary to God. That's exactly what happened. He's a Christian. And then what about uh, some Christian businessmen? If you talk to them and say, oh, nowadays very difficult, business is very difficult, you know, we don't give under, under counter money, we don't give under counter money, we cannot get the projects, no, our business cannot do well. A Christian guy is telling us, oh, nowadays are so difficult, business. We don't give under counter money, we don't give primer. Nowadays we cannot survive. I want to tell you, no friends, when a Christian believer begins to be awakened, awakening that I'm talking about this morning, when they become awakened, they will realize, they will realize, uh, oh, that whatever is contrary to God and His principles, He will feel uh, a, a, a radar within Him to say, that's wrong. That's wrong. All right? So this is what's happening in the Christians when they are not awakened to righteousness. Awakened to righteousness. All right? Now, our Prime Minister calls for a corruption-free, uh, corruption-free government. We all know every time our, our Prime Minister is talking about corruption-free government, and then our DAP, who is the state government, he wants they want to prove that this government is a government of transparency, integrity, and justice. They want to prove to everybody that the government is uh, transparent and integ with integrity and justice. Now, friends, if the world is crying out against corruption and injustice, what more the people of God? Children of God need to do. If the world is calling out against corruption and, and injustice, all the more, the church will arise and be awakened to righteousness. If you came and, and you talked to somebody and you, uh, you told a lie, you thought it was a white lie, you told a lie, 
But when you go back to your home, if you're awakened by the resurrection power, the Spirit of God will tell you, you don't lie. You'll come to a sensitive issue, sens sensitive uh, uh, thought to know that you actually should not have said the lie. You need to be awakened to righteousness. All right? Sometimes we be compromising. No, no, never mind. Lie. Everybody says lies. What? Everybody talks lies. Never mind. But this morning I'm talking about the God of resurrection who is awakening our, uh, uh, the people of God. All right? So friends, all the more the church must rise up against corruption and injustice. The God of resurrection whom we believe and follow is the God of righteousness, justice and peace. All right? Awaken to righteousness. The second one, the second area that you will, your, the quickening of God of resurrection will bring about in your life, in your Christian life is awaken to love and intimacy. Awaken to love and intimacy. <clears throat> There's one scripture, Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 2. Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 2, it says, I sleep, but my heart is awake. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. It is the voice of my beloved. Now this portion about Solomon, if you have never read the book of Solomon, read it. It's describing a, a Jewish uh, a woman from Jerusalem and she's been describing uh, her relationship with her beloved, somebody whom she loves. The, the whole thing is talking about the relationship of the lover. Now, it actually is a, it, it, it's a typify or, or to show us the kind of love that we can have with our master, our master who is, a, uh, who is the lover of our soul. That's, that's the kind of relationship you're going to see now. Now, the Shulamite woman, it talks about a Shulamite woman, a love relationship with the beloved. You know, when you are in love, your mind, your concentration, and everything surrounds your lover. How many of you are in love right now? <laughs> or some young people you are in love but you are hiding right <laughs> alright now when your love your mind your concentration and everything surrounds your lover alright and when you are when you are in love when the phone rings suddenly you jump up thinking that it's your girlfriend or thinking that it's your boyfriend suddenly you jump up right or not come on young people say yes at least <laughs> When the phone rings immediately, oh, you're my girlfriend or my boyfriend, you jump up, okay? It's not wrong, don't worry. When I was in my late 20s, I jumped a lot like that. <laughs> I jumped from, from, from one rickshaw to another rickshaw, one, one uh, train to another train, just to see my lover. <laughs> you know, uh, that time uh, I was sent by the government to Dhaka, I was studying in Dhaka in, in Bangladesh and she was still studying in uh, Calcutta in India and we didn't have enough money to go by flight and travel to see your girlfriend or she wouldn't have money to come over and uh, so what happened was <coughs> I used to <coughs> jump from one tri shot to tri shot maybe they call it rickshaw we jump rickshaw to this place or another place and from there another rickshaw and then jump to another train and then we go on for almost 24 hours Jump from place to place just to meet our lover. That was actually what happened. So when you are truly in love, you do anything. You do anything you want to do because you are in love. All right. So what happened was uh, when you are in love, the phone rings. You jump, as I told you, and you go to you go to sleep thinking of your lover. You dream about your lover. You wake up with visions of your lover. <laughs> amen. Somebody said amen. <laughs> You wake up with visions of your lover. All right. <laughs> you know, the God of resurrection is the God of love and intimacy. The God of resurrection is the God of love and intimacy. The Bible says Jesus is the lover of your soul. Do you go to bed with your heart awake to the voice of God? Do you go to bed with your heart awake to the voice of God? Don't you long to hear the voice of God say, I love you, you are my beloved son, or you are my beloved daughter? Don't you long to hear the voice of God? The Shulamite woman says, I sleep, but my heart is awake. 
When you go to bed, do you really long to hear the voice of God saying, I love you? You know, the lover of our soul wants to, to show us his love constantly. The lover of our soul, Jesus, wants to love you. In spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our shortcomings, he still loves us so much. He still loves us. Is there a hunger and thirst for intimacy with God? Is there a hunger? And this morning when you're beginning to worship, and I, I sense the Spirit of God was already stirring your heart towards loving Jesus. And I was sensing in my heart, there was this new hunger that is stirred in your heart as you were worshiping. There needs to be a hunger and thirst for the intimacy with the God of resurrection. So friends, let us be awakened to love him intimately like never before. Like never before. And the third thing, the third area that the quickening power of resurrection will, will affect us is awaken to his will. Awaken to his will. You know, when we are awakened to, to love God and keep his ways, we will desire to do his will. When we are awakened to love God and keep his ways, you will desire to do his will. You know, the scripture says, one more scripture here, scripture says in Matthew 7 and verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. I want you to catch this part. You must have read this, this scripture many times. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. So this is something we need that the Christians need to be awakened to the will of the Father, the will of God. Let us be awakened to know His directions and His will in our life. Let us be awakened. Most of the time we make decisions thinking, oh, this is God, that is, that, that is good, and the, uh, this, person's, uh, this person recommended this, so I just make the decision. But as people of God, the Spirit of God wants to awaken us to His will so that we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Spirit of God wants to awaken us to His will. Awaken. You know, His will for us is always good and perfect. He said, the thoughts that I think toward you is always to prosper you. The Lord says, the thought I think towards you is always to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. That's what Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 says. I think towards the thought the thought that he thinks towards you and I, he says, I will give you and make you prosperous. I will give you future and a hope. So everything that God's will is for us is always good and perfect. So when you are awakened to love God and put him first in your life, you will want to obey him and do his perfect will in your life. You want to obey him and do his perfect will in your life. Now seeking, uh, seeking your life partner. I'm really seeking God. I want to know whether this is the person that you want me to marry. Or are we looking at the person's outward and say, oh, she got a, a sharp nose, beautiful eyes, beautiful lips. Oh, she's the one I, I want to marry. As Christians, we need to awaken to his will to know which person God wants you to get married to. There may be five believers. Which one, Lord? Which one, Lord? So seeking his will for the person you want to get married, seeking his will for the job you are applying for, seeking God's will for the job you are applying for. And many times we make a mistake just because we think it is more money, that is God's will. But later we find out it's horrible. Work, work, uh, work environment is so horrible and you feel that you've made a mistake. So seeking his will for the job you are applying, asking yourself, what is God's plan and will for my life? What is God's plan for my will in life? And this morning as the Spirit of God begins to awaken you to His will, He awakens you to His will and you will always want to know that there is God's will for, my, for me to do this. Always, is it God's will for me to change my office? Is it God's will for me to do this and do that? When you are awakened to His will, you begin to be so sensitive, alright? The last one, the final one, is awaken to serve the Lord. Awaken to serve the Lord. You know, when you experience the power of resurrection in your life, and I awaken to Him above anyone else and everything else, 
you are awakened to him above anyone else and everything else, you will have a deep desire in your heart to serve the Lord. When you are awakened, when you are awakened with the power of resurrection and to love God more than anything else, more than everybody else, if you are awakened, if you are awakened, I see you, brother, brother, Daniel smiling, right, all right. When you are awakened, when you are awakened, you begin to want to know how I can serve the Lord, all right? So, don't you see that when God, when you, God begins to work in your life and you are awakened inside, there is a deep desire to serve Him. You will serve Him in the workplace. You will serve Him in the place you work. You will always want to share the goodness of God. You always want to share the goodness of God. Your priority will become God and His service. That will be your priority. God and His service. Alright? Now, your priority will become God and His service. So the question we need to ask ourselves, friends, in closing, what is God's purpose for you as a born-again believer? That's the question we're going to end up with this, this morning. What is God's purpose for you as a born-again believer? I want to give you the final scripture this morning and turn with me to Exodus 9 and verse 16. Exodus 9 and verse 16. All right. And the scripture says, but for this purpose, for what purpose? <laughs> for what purpose? I read you the scripture, Exodus 9 and verse 16. For what purpose? All right. But for this purpose, I have raised you up. For this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. That is the purpose of you. You and I becoming born again. You and I becoming born again. You and I have been awakened from darkness to light. That is the purpose. That is the purpose. God's purpose is for this purpose I raised you up. That I may show my power in you. Do you know God wants to show his mighty power in you and through you? God wants to show his mighty power in you and through you. He wants to show you that power. And that his name may be declared in all the earth. So you and I are called, are called. As I told you just now, rescue mission, we are supposed to go and serve the Lord and do what the Lord wants us to do. That is the will. So awaken to serve the Lord. So this morning, friends, if you believe in your heart that you are believing a God of resurrection who is alive forevermore, and then he says, you, he has quickened you and made you alive together with him. So the God whom we trust is alive and you who are sitting here is alive. Can you realize that? You are alive. You are quickened by the power of resurrection. All right? So we need to understand, friends, in closing, I trust that you have received this message personally into your heart. Now in this message, as I told you, is the purpose of this message is to see every believer coming to church week after week that will be continually spiritually alive and awaken and awaken spiritually so that they can declare, so that they can show God's power in them, that they can declare His name, His name can be declared in all the earth. All right, that is the thing, friends. That is the one that, that God wants us to do. And I'm going to conclude right now and um, be empowered. Be empowered by the power of resurrection that I'm talking about. We haven't come to Resurrection Sunday, but before that, recognize He's alive. Before that, recognize I'm empowered by the power of resurrection. Be empowered or empowered by the Spirit of God in your life. If you try to live your spiritual life without the Spirit of God, it is just goes flat. Without the Spirit of God leading you and guiding you, your Christian life will never be a testimony. Your Christian life will never be a powerful testimony if you allow your Christian life just like any other religion to lead you in your life. A Christian is awakened by the Spirit, the Spirit of God that leads you and guides you. So friends, be awakened to righteousness, be awakened to love and intimacy. Be awakened to His perfect will. And be awakened to serve the Lord. And as you are awakened, you will say, Yes, Lord, I want to serve you. Yes, Lord, in some area, I want to declare your name. Uh, the musicians can come quickly. But I want to just close by saying, friend, 
It is a challenge that you and I have to receive by the Spirit of God. What do you want to do for God? What is God's purpose for our lives? I told you. God's purpose for every born again believer oh, is to be awakened to serve Him and live for Him. Awaken. 